Another tag video? Well, guess Andrew pointed his magic wand at me about, hmm, I don't know, two months ago. That's Andrew over at Andrew's Wizardly Reads. That's really a, a, a magic joke, not anything. You perverts. Hey, what's up, bookworms? Mike back with another tag video today. We're going to be talking about Stephen King, sort of. Now, I want to get this across early to people. Is This is called the Stephen King tag, but it isn't just about Stephen King books. It has like a theme. For example, it'll say like Joyland, which is the title of one of his books. Joyland is name a book that makes you happy, that kind of thing. So it isn't exactly just going to be Stephen King books, but me being a constant reader, Stephen King might come up more than once. Just want to let you guys know in case you thought, well, I haven't read very much Stephen King, so I don't know how much interest I would have in this. But if that's the case, you probably didn't click on this video anyway but i want to thank andrew from andrew's wizardly reads for being patient with me I told him and he hit me tag me december and i had like my entire december like planned out could not find the space for it and i said hey uh you know, give me some time and i did i promise i'll get back to it so that is why we are here guys i do enjoy doing these i just try not to do too many of them because uh, uh it takes me back to them days of uh you know gen xers when we first got the internet we were crazy about them chain emails you know so uh good times right to be had all the way around but uh, let's get right into it guys with uh, the first question here it says name your favorite stephen king book or, or stephen king book you want to start with now obviously uh, i've already started Stephen King. So I'll go with my favorite, which of course is It from 1986. And I think the reason that I like this is number one, well, I just talked about my favorite first line. Just listen to the first line of that book. It is totally metal and it makes you want to keep reading. But I think that first chapter might be the greatest first chapter in the history of horror fiction. I think it's just that good. It's iconic at this point. But for me, guys, coming of age. That's why I love Stephen King because he does it better than anybody. That is my favorite little subgenre out there is the coming of age story. And this book has seven of them. And I love it. And it's one of those things, it's great that when you go back and you read it, you know, if you read it when you're like a teen or younger, it means one thing. It depends on how young. I don't know how young you should be reading this, but hey, I'm not one to judge. I'm playing Gears of War with my kid right now. Anyhow, so you read it when you're younger. I read it for the first time when I was 15. I really liked, you know, the young losers. But when they were growing up, I was like, oh, it's okay. It's not as good as the first half. Read it again as an adult when I was that age. And I was like, wow, I like both parts now. So it's a book I think only gets better as you get older. And again, if you love coming of age and you love big, scary clowns, eight feet tall, razor sharp teeth, that is definitely the book for you. All right, let's start with the theme ones here. Number two is called Nightmares and Dreamscapes. Now, this says, name a book that gave you nightmares or kept you up late at night. I'm also going to stick with a Stephen King one for this one because it's got to be Pet Cemetery, And I think it's for different reasons. Much like the previous story, I say, when I read it as a teenager, I just wanted to be scared. You know, it was like the third Stephen King book I ever read. I think I read it, then I read The Shining, and then I was reading this. And I just wanted to be scared. That was always a... Stephen King, Master of Horror, right? You know, that's what I knew about him at the time. I just wanted to be scared. It did. It scared the pants off me for several different reasons. Read it again as an adult and scared me for a whole different set of reasons when you have a child. And I did at time. It was about the age that Gage is in the story. And it really just completely broke my heart. And it made you realize you have this whole underlying fear of losing a child as a parent. It's just something you cannot cope with. And I think that book just does such an amazing job of displaying grief and, and how it can affect your entire life and everyone around you. And your whole kingdom can fall apart in a day, you know, over one event. And I think it just shows that and it just makes you scared in so many different ways. And even as an adult, yeah, Zelda, still scary. Still very, very scary. This one is called Joyland. Like I said, name a book that makes you happy. And there's several. I think of lots of books that make me laugh. I guess I got to go with Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. Uh, Andy Evan, really, but just the first one especially, because I think that was the first time that I'd read a science fiction book that wasn't super serious. Now, a lot of science fiction is always, uh, this is why humanity is going to die, because we're going to launch nukes and kill ourselves, or, you know, this political leader is going to destroy the world, and we're going to have to go to another galaxy. <laughs> anyway, you know what I mean. So that was the first one I read that was just hilarious. It was just fun. It took all of that stuff that made science fiction super serious and turned on its head, 
and made it just a barrel of laughs. And I've said it once, I'll say it again, every single time I talk about Douglas Adams, his unique ability to end any sentence that he wanted with a joke and to make it land every single time. The guy was a genius in that book. I recommend you have a glass of water while you're reading it because you're going to be laughing quite a bit. All right, next one is Misery. Uh, name a book that made you sad. You know, I did a whole video on books that have made me cry over my life. And they've all kind of done it for different reasons. It could be because journeys end. It can be because, you know, parting from dear friends. It could be from losing loved ones. But I got to think about one that really cut me the hardest. And it's because they made us read this in sixth grade. And uh, I can see, you know, my human characters get trampled on and, and be okay. But when you start messing with dogs, I can't handle it. And that, of course, is where the red fern grows. I just talk about this book, guys, and I usually will get a little missy-eyed because that book is more than just that. I mean, just the, the, the last chapter in that book to this day still has a lasting scar right here that I will never get rid of because it's just so touching and emotional. And I, I declare you should not read that book, guys, because it's a classic in every sense of the word, but it will never leave you ever like I said I read it in sixth grade and I would not touch it again and no I would not I would read I would read Blood Mirror by Brent Weeks three more times before I read Where the Red Fern Grows again even though I think it's an incredible book just because I don't think I can emotionally uh, handle it right now so yeah that one for sure made me very very miserable uh, next one is Cujo name your favorite animal companion and I'm tempted to say Night Eyes from the the Farseer trilogy by Robin Hobb but I feel like that might be a little bit of recency bias uh, so since this is a Stephen King tag, I, tag I'm going to stick with my original answer, which is going to be Oi from The Dark Tower, because he's such a good boy. Uh, I think he's very much, uh, lots of good animal companions out there, but I feel like he's the most unique, obviously, since he's, you know, not a wolf. A wolf seems to be the go-to in fantasy for good reason. Wolves are badass. They're totally metal, right? But uh, yeah, I, I just think that Oi, just, uh, it's just so good. <laughs> and just the way that he'll repeat a couple of random words back then again. And, and you can see this, uh, you know, he grows that attachment with Jake, but he ends up growing that attachment with the whole concept over the journey of that story and he's more than just you know a random dog who doesn't speak or anything like that uh, i think it's just a, it's such an, a fresh touch on a story that gets very dark in some places and i felt like he kind of kept it lighthearted when you know when our content was at their lowest he really did kind of help uh, be that that positive reinforcement that they needed along the way so i'll always have to go with my boy oi uh number six is dr sleep name a book that bored you to death or made you fall asleep? Moby Dick. Moby Dick, without a second question. I did my unpopular opinion classics that I did not care for, and Moby Dick was on there. And that gets a lot of, you know, shock and appall whenever I talk about this. But that says, I think that's one of those where it was just, it was forced on you. you know, some of those books that were forced on us in high school, I ended up liking most of them. I really did. But Moby Dick, I think today is still responsible for the reason I am not interested in nautical books and seafaring books. I do not want to read anything that takes place just on the open ocean because I find it so dreadfully boring. And yeah, that book to me, I do not get it. I do not get why people love it to death because it just, it bored me to death. And I just, I don't have anything else to say about it. I talked about it more in that video. And there are some things that uh, about it that I feel like the author was trying to say. And a lot of people I think missed. But uh, again, watch that video if you were curious. Number seven here, this is Eyes of the Dragon. Name your favorite book series with dragons in it. Hmm. Far and Away, guys. Far and Away, A Song of Ice and Fire, George R. R. Martin. Myself included with this, I think a lot of people have become jaded over time because of how long he's taken to write this story or if he's even writing it anymore. I mean, who can say, him or Pat Rothfuss, which one is is, is actually writing or not? You know, I, I don't know. Uh, it's easy for us to sit here and say, oh, you're not doing anything when it's been 11 years, you know. But uh, what I think has kind of gotten lost during that time is just how amazing the books that are out are, especially those first three. Those first three are up there with just about any other fantasy series I can name. It's up there, first of all. It's up there with, with uh, Lord of the Rings, for God's sakes. Those first three books are absolutely incredible. There's not a boring chapter in any of them, and I will fight about that. I think those first three books are just some of the best fantasy I have ever read, especially A Storm of Swords. That might be my favorite single fantasy book of all time. I don't know. That would be a tough, tough decision, but uh, yeah. That's a series I think is just, 
A lot of people have also gotten jaded because of TV series. And just like I said, when I talked about why you should read A Song of Ice and Fire, I don't care about the TV series. I'm here to talk about the books. And uh, those books are amazing despite not being finished. They're, that goes my top three fantasy series of all time despite not being finished. That's how strong those books are. Four Past Midnight. Name a book you stayed up way too late to finish. This is easy. This is easy. I've had many book where I've been like, I should go to bed. I got work in the morning, one more chapter. But I think about one that I started and said, all right, this is it. I'm not going to bed till this is done. That was a memory of light when I was finishing Wheel of Time. God, it's been almost two years now since I finished that. And uh, it was just one of those things where I was like, okay, I didn't read the last battle in one sitting. Like everybody's like, you got to read the last battle in one sitting. I'm like, well, it's 300 pages, guys. My life sometimes doesn't work out like that. So I did it. I split it in half. And then that next night, I did the second half of the last battle. And then I said, you know what? I'm going to finish this book. And it had a bit ways to go. And it was literally like 3.30 in the morning. And through very, very teary eyes, I did finish that book. And uh, uh, I'll always be thankful for it because... Uh, it's, it's a heck of a journey, guys. I know that uh, a lot of people have conflicting opinions right now about Wheel of Time. Uh, I'll always say that it's not a series without its faults. I've talked about the good and the bad on the channel of Wheel of Time, but I think it's a series that everyone should read absolutely if you have the patience for it because it is not a race. You know, I Take your time with it. Enjoy it. That's what I did, and I think spreading it out over the course of a year really made me enjoy it all the more. I don't want to binge a series that long. But um, yeah, no regrets on reading that series. And as time goes by, the arrow is only pointing up on how much I do love that series. And I'll always cherish that moment I stayed up too late to finish the last book with those people I felt like were family by the end. Speaking of the end, how about End of Watch? Name your favorite last book in a series. This is hard because I think a lot of series I think of, I'm always like, I'm not one of those people that's impossible to please with an ending. I'm usually okay with endings but i can't think of very many last books where i don't have problems with it at all and probably will be an unpopular opinion but i gotta go with harry potter and the deathly hallows because i think when i read that it had so it had a mountain of expectations you guys uh the world stopped to read that book really well i don't think we'll ever see that again in our lifetimes the world stopping to read a book i'm not talking about just the fantasy community i'm talking about the world the world was stopping was standing lines at walmart's to read that book when it came out and not only did it meet those expectations, I think it exceeded them in many ways. And it was an incredible book that I speed read, uh, you know, for a day and a half. You know, I did have to go to sleep, you know. But uh, it just, it was an incredible journey and it had a very satisfying uh, conclusion. And I couldn't say enough about how she actually tied up that series in, in the best of ways. And I think that to the day, I can't think of a series where I've been more satisfied with an ending where I felt like, okay, that felt whole. It felt complete. I don't feel like anything was left unanswered. I don't feel like anything was forced or rushed. It felt like it was planned out the way that it should be. So yeah, that, 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 that's a book that uh, I'll always hold up pretty high and that uh, it, it exceeded expectations, the very high expectations I'd already had for it. Next up, we have The Outsider. Name the most unpopular opinion that makes you feel like an outsider. <laughs> Uh, I think mine is the Name of the Wind is an average book at best. And, you know, that's not a secret for people who've been watching this channel for a while. Uh, I've said that uh, I wish that I understood why everyone likes that book so much. It's got to be more than just the guy's a beautiful writer because I was like, it, the, the characters are lame. The story's not that great. I just didn't find myself caring. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I know that's unpopular. I know that I'm, I'm not two guys. I can look at something and say, wow, everyone likes this but me. It must be a me problem, not a them problem, you know. So, uh, yeah, it's it, a lot of books you'll say are polarizing, but I would say nine out of ten responses on my unpopular opinion on the name of the wind are telling me how wrong I am. So uh, I very much know that uh, I am on the wrong end of opinion on that book, but it's still my opinion, even if it is very uh, unpopular. I should have saved my Brent Weeks thing until now. Rage, name a book that made you rage quit or DNF. Blood Mirror by Brent Weeks, uh, book number four of five in the Lightbringer series. And here's the thing, I didn't rage quit that book. I hate read the rest of that book to try to force myself to finish it. And then I quit the series with one book left. When I was where I was at with that series after that book, which completely jumped the shark, jumped the shark so hard that shark is, is orbiting Mars right now. That's how bad that fourth book was with some of his plot decisions to where I just said, I don't have it in me 
to read a 1,000 page hardcover right now in this universe because I just do not care anymore. He's completely ruined everything that I was enjoying about this series. So yeah, that book, absolutely awful. And it's amazing because I thought the first two books in that series were fire. They were fantastic. I love them most. Probably the best non-Brandon Sanderson magic system I've ever seen. And he completely squanders it in one book. It's amazing how bad it went. So um, people all the time, you know, I'll tell them, hey, read the book and make up your own mind. I, I just want to save you guys time. Do not, do not read the Lightbringer series. There, I said it. Uh, different seasons, name your favorite seasonal book. You know, I usually go with like something like Christmas related when I hear something like this or Halloween. How about the fall season as a whole? How about Something Wicked This Way Comes by Ray Bradbury? Uh, I mean, first line of that book, I think, is like October is a month for boys. Uh, I think that, that that book very much captures the spirit of the fall season of October, of Halloween. Just the, the spooky overtones of that book really kind of sent home you know, how he feels about that season and how, how kids treat that time of year. And um, you know me, again, sucker for coming of age, and that's one of the better ones in a horror setting. And uh, Mr. Dark, God, what a great, great villain that is. But that's just a spectacular book from one of my favorite writers of all time. So it's hard for me not to, to think of that one for this topic here. Finders Keepers, name your most prized, rare, expensive book that you own. You know, I don't really do this. Uh, price, what my books are worth or anything like that. Okay, you got me on that one, Andrew. I had to think, I had to pause and think about it for a minute there. Huh? I guess you say prized, which you can't really put just monetary value on. I gotta say my It first edition, getting that, uh, that very, very famous slip uh, the, the, the dust jacket for that uh, copy of the book and it being a first edition obviously helped a lot. Doesn't change the words and the story, but it's just one of those things that, look, it's my second favorite book of all time. You know, I wanted to make sure that I got a, a really good copy. And when I saw it was a first edition, I didn't mind the price tag that I was paying for it. Uh, if I was ever to get one signed, that would be it for sure. Uh, Rare, I'll go with my Gone with the Wind by Margaret Mitchell. I have a third printing of that. I'm not sure about the year right now because I'm afraid to open it. I'm afraid it'll fall apart if I open it. But it is very rare. See it right here. And it's, in per it's not in perfect. I mean, it looks aged. I mean, it's older than, way older than me, believe it or not. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's in pretty good shape for what it is. But I'm afraid that if I open it, like the glue will pop off of the, uh, the actual binding. So I won't even open it. I'm not Joe from you. I don't know how to fix books like that. So uh, I I'm not going to open it. And then I say expensive. Again, this is probably a guess. Maybe my Red Rising books, because they're signed and they're all first editions. They're signed by Pierce Brown. Uh, and they're not they're not personalized. It's just they're just signed. Uh, maybe again, I don't know how that stuff works, guys. Again, I've never tried to price my books. I never thought that it's like what kids used to brag about how much their baseball cards are worth. I was like, if life ever gets so bad that you got to cash in your baseball cards, you might have messed up. So yeah, I don't I don't feel like I'm ever have to get rid of my books for anything like that. So uh, I don't really know. Uh, maybe the most expensive book on the shelves is maybe. Of uh, some of the Folio Society editions, I know that Book of the New Sun is pretty expensive, and, and the Dune one uh, from my guys Dalton and Theo on those. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, they were they were way more than I was willing to pay for some of them, so I, I assume maybe that. But I don't know. That's that's that's, that's kind of a, a tough one. How about later? Name a book you keep putting off and telling yourself that you'll get to later. You know, it was Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn for years, and before that was Hyperion. And I read Hyperion last year, and I'm reading Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn right now. So I can't really go with those. I mean, I guess the last one on that old bucket list I used to have is Black Company. I guess I got to go with that. I've been putting that off pretty much since high school. And the thing with that is like, I'm going to be putting it off longer now because the things that I gripe about that I don't like about Malazan, people have told me, hmm, that's like all Black Company is. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I don't know if I'm ready to jump into that, at least not right now. So I'll never say never, you know, on any of these things, but that is definitely one that I have put off for a long, 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 long time. Desperation, name a new release that you're desperate to get your hands on. It's not really out yet, but I think I'm gonna be getting the review copy pretty soon. So I'm gonna go ahead and count. I'm gonna say Hunger of the Gods by John Gwynn because uh, since Red Rising 6 doesn't have a release date. So I'll say that one because it's uh, it's gonna be here very, very soon. And I'm anxious to see if uh, Old Vicious Pen continues this streak he has with me. Eight for eight. There's very few authors that have you know not had a miss for me so far that far into their, their their bibliography. So I'm very excited to to pick that up here uh, sometime between now and April and, and continue on with that series. Because I think John Gwynn 
one of the more underrated fantasy authors going around. Even though I think he's starting to get around a little bit. He's starting to get a little more recognized. I saw a lot more people reading Shadow of the Gods than I felt like people were reading uh, John Gwynn just a year ago. So uh, I think he's finally, you know, hitting the big time. And I'm very, very happy for him. Last up, tag your fellow constant readers. Well, I can't do Sarah from Sarah Reads because I know that Andrew already tagged her, and that would be really, really mean. So I'll go, uh, I don't know if he'll do this because I don't. He's not a booktuber, guys. He's a, he runs a horror channel, and it's more about media than it is books. But he does talk about Stephen King books a lot. So I got a list. Um, you know, if you say I have uh, someone in a quartet that I look up to as a mentor, it would be Jaime and Fuego from the Horror Show. Uh, I would love to hear his answer on some of these things. And then uh, maybe Jason from Jason's Weird Reads, a horror channel that I think is very underrated. You guys should check out. I'm gonna tag their channels below, guys. Please. Uh, check their stuff out and last i'm gonna do john from love of reading we just talked rather recently about some stephen king things and he seems just as obsessed with the king uh, multiverse as i am so i think they all would give some really good feedback on some of these questions and give you an idea of uh, things they like outside of stephen king maybe so guys what are your answers to some of these tags why don't you drop in the comments and let me know some of your answers and i will tag you there and andrew thank you as always for tagging me my friend i will talk to you guys there